after we calculate the expected return, the next thing we want to know is the standard deviation. How volatile is the return for this particular stock? How much better than average might we do or how much worse than average might we do? The standard deviation is a little bit messier formula. This can really intimidate people but again once we walk through an example you'll see it's not too bad as long as you focus on your order of operations it's fairly straightforward but what we want to do is for each possible outcome we want to take the return for that outcome minus the average or expected return squared times the probability sum those up for all possible scenarios and then take the square root Again, let's go through the example to illustrate this. So we're going to start calculating our standard deviation. Standard deviation for stock A. And we want to start with the first possible outcome. It's going to be 0.1 probability and outcome negative 50% return. So our formula says probability actual minus expected squared and all of that's going to be under a square root sign so we start out with the probability 0.1 actual what's the negative 50 percent and the expected return we had calculated earlier was 13 percent and that's squared. Move on to our next possible outcome. Got a 0.2 probability and a negative 20 percent return. So we have 0.2 times negative 20 minus 13 squared. Our third outcome has a 40 percent chance or 0.4 probability of earning a 10 percent rate of return. 0.4 times 10 minus 13 squared and then our last scenario was the strong growth scenario which should generate a 60% rate of return and has a probability of 0.3 so 0.3 times 60 minus 13 squared now one of the most common places people make mistakes here is order of operations and the other common mistake people make is dropping negative signs so be careful with both of those as we move through the process all that's left is the math so let's walk through that we want to start out with the first thing order of operations says do what's within parentheses first negative 50 and don't drop the negative sign. That's not 50. It's got to be negative 50. Make sure you use the plus minus key to make that negative. Minus 13 gives us negative 63. Then we want to square that. And lastly, we want to multiply by the probability 0.1. So that gives us 396.9. Now we move on to the second outcome, which is negative 20 minus 13 squared times 0.2. So negative 20 minus 13 squared times 0 0.2 is 217.8. Next we have 10 minus 13 squared times 0 0.4. 10 minus 13 squared times 0 0.4. This is 3.6. And lastly, we have 60 minus 13 squared times 0.3. 60 
16 minus 13 squared times 0 0.3 is a 662.7. Now we add those up and take the square root. So 396.9 plus 217.8 plus 3.6 plus 662.7 gives us 1,281 and then we just take the square root of that and get a standard deviation of 35.79 percent. The higher the standard deviation, the more risk that's involved. The lower the standard deviation, the less risk. We can think of a lower, a lower standard deviation, meaning we're more likely to get an actual return that's close to the standard or close to the expected return. A higher standard deviation implies that we're likely to get an actual return that could be quite a bit different than the expected return. The extreme situation would be a standard deviation of zero, which tells us that our expected return will always be the same as our actual return and we have no risk whatsoever. We're always going to earn the expected return. So if we have a risk-free security, it should have a standard deviation equal to zero.